All right, so a while ago I posted in the Discord that I was interested in doing sort of map review type videos. Uh, since a lot of people were asking about uh, optimization, lighting, brushwork, or just general advice on how to map. Um, and so someone volunteered themselves uh, to be first. His name is Penguin. Uh, I believe he goes by Daddy Pippin as well on Steam. And his map that he wanted me to look at was uh, Jagomir, I believe it's called, if I say that correctly. But he basically wanted me to look at uh, some optimization improvements that he could make, um, especially with his outside area. Uh, now the map itself, uh, in game it's called RP underscore Jagomir base. Um, it has it's a rather large base. It's three floors on the interior. It's got out, some outside areas, garages, you know, all sorts of things, small camps, and. You know, he wanted just some optimization tips on, on how we can make this map run better. So I loaded into the map. Uh, typically the first thing I do when I'm testing a map or testing it for optimization, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on net graph, which is the statistics down there in the bottom right corner, as you can see. I'm hovering around like 200 to 180 frames. Um, the next thing I do is turn on SV Cheats 1. Just going to type that into the console. I've already have it on, obviously. Um, this will allow you to enable wireframe. Now, what wireframe does is it shows you what I'm visibly able to see on the map. So, wherever I'm standing, everything that I can see is what is loading. All the little blue things, those are props or functions, and all the pink here this is brushwork um, so you know the first thing we're noticing is I'm standing in this room that's kind of you know closed off but I'm loading in a mass majority of the map so I'm gonna kind of walk through the map and as I stumble across uh, issues or things that can be made better I'll go ahead and show that in hammer I'm um, so sort of the first Thing I've noticed a lot on this map so far is it's got these sort of door frames that go like this. Uh, if you look in the brushwork as well, uh, this door frame itself is a prop and it kind of has wrapped geometry around the top of it. So I can go ahead and open this in Hammer. Um, as I'm in Hammer now, I've sort of recreated uh, what his door frame is minus the prop. Um, but how I would fix this issue. Uh, basically preventing everything behind it from rendering in. Uh, you can do this pretty much in one way, I would say. Um, I wouldn't attempt making a slanted area portal. Uh, typically those will just cause errors and leaks. Um, so how I would approach this is take these two side pieces and just turn that into a funk detail. Uh, and how I did that was just control T, then funk detail. You're just going to turn that off. So now... I have a name to door. I've already named this door. You can name it whatever you want, but just make sure it's a unique name to this door. Then I'm going to go ahead and make an area portal within this door. I'm going to make sure that it's touching every single side here. You don't want it to be any anywhere off this off this wall, the ceiling or the floor. So then you're going to control T Search area portal. The initial state's going to be closed unless this door is starts open, which most doors will start closed, so we don't need that. We'll just set this to close. Name of the link door, that's this door here. So you'll just take this little eyedropper and just click on the door. So that'll fix the issue of having an area portal uh, blocking everything behind this, this door. Uh, so the next thing I came across was this lobby area. Um, and as you can see, I'm at around 100 frames, which is relatively low. Um, so I'll go ahead and open wireframe and see what's causing the issue. It's pretty much because I'm loading the entire map at this area. Um, there's multiple ways to fix this sort of room here. But I would say the biggest issue 
so far is the lack of area portals on these doors or just doors themselves. Um, adding in doors uh, to seal off areas helps with optimi optimization so much just because it can close off what the person's seeing. Um, the difference between open and closed area portals, so say this was my door frame and I just had an open thing here. It wasn't attached to any door. Essentially, the compiler is going to try to calculate what I can see when I'm looking through this. So when I'm looking here, it won't load anything on this side of the door. It'll load in what I can see over here. Same with over here. If I'm standing over here, it'll, it won't load over here, but it will load what's over here. The problem with having a lot of these is it, it, it takes a lot to run a lot of this calculations in the background and you don't want a lot of area portals all over the map that are always open because like I said it, it's a lot of calculations for no reason so my biggest fix for this would be to add doors to these sections and just tie an area portal to it like I showed before uh, that'll literally bring this area up to probably 299 frames uh, no problem so the next thing is these sort of multi-floor um, sections here. Now there's a few ways you can approach this. Um, I sort of recreated it here. Um, let's just say I don't have his map file so I can't say for certain, but if these are funk details, uh, say they aren't, this floor isn't. If this floor is, uh, what you can do is create an area portal that stretches the entirety of this. You can bring it in a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly in line with it. But so now when I turn off the funk detail, and this is an area portal, make it an area portal. So this is an open area portal. It'll do what I just explained before. You, you, you'll you look through it and it'll try to calculate uh, what you can see based on where you're standing, looking, etc. Um, I, I, would, I wouldn't say this would harm you uh, in this position here uh, just because of what exactly I'm looking. There's not much I'm looking through. Uh, once when the area portal doors are added in, there won't be much for me to look through. Uh, but another way you can sort of approach this via optimization is using hint and skips. Hint and skips don't work as effectively as they do in other games like Counter-Strike or um, Quake or whatever other source games there are. Um, but in Gary's Mod, they, they kind of work. Um, essentially, you would want to overlap the brush if this is not a funk detail this is just a regular brush you'll just want to overlap it and on the face that's overlapping you want to use a hint and apply that just to that face so it'll look like this basically what this does is it tells the compiler that you want to draw the line right here so that way it's, it's forcing visibility on this section. So when I'm trying to look up into there, it, it'll do the same thing as an area portal, but it's way cheaper and it, and it won't cause as much issues. It's sort of baked into the compiler. So I finally made my way outside. And as you can see, I'm loading in quite a lot of things here. Um, obviously, I'm still loading in a little bit of the base. I'm also loading in stuff that's far on the outside. Uh, now what this map does have, which is a a very good thing, it's quite underused, is a fog controller. As you can see, there's a far Z clip plane that is basically making it so that doesn't exist anymore, which is a great first thing to optimize. Um, but then you have all these pesky props all over the place, these trees, right? Now how do you optimize trees? I can show you here. So I, I sort of created a little scene. This might be my next map, it's incredible. But anyway, uh, you're gonna go ahead and go into properties here. So you'll see right here, start fade distance and end fade distance. So essentially, if I do start fade 
and end fade. Let's just set that to 500 and 1000. So whenever I'm in this part of it, it'll begin to fade into reality. When I'm in this inner circle, it'll be faded in 100%. When I'm outside of the, the end, this will no longer exist. So the best way to do this is sort of, I usually take about 2,000, potentially 2,000 off of your far Z clip plane of your fog controller, and I would put that on there. So say your Z clip is at 10,000, I would maybe make the end distance 8,000. Then your start fade can be anywhere from like 1,500 less to 2,000 less. And that'll make it so these will fade into existence, but they'll also exit before your your Z clip planes forces them to exit, if that makes sense. So another thing I noticed was these shadows coming down from the prop, which is on the wall. Um, I can show you how to fix that. Essentially, click into prop. You're going to disable shadow. If that causes issues where the prop becomes completely black or it's not receiving lighting correctly, you can add in these things called info lights. Well, info lighting. And you'll just want to name it, whatever. You can literally type in that. And then you're going to tie it to the prop by clicking this eyedropper under lighting origin and just clicking that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm, I'm trying to sort of narrow down how I want to structure these things, but I hope this can be a good first uh, look into some optimization with some real-life examples here. Um, so please leave feedback. Uh, it's much appreciated. Thanks.